Okay, here we go. The bald-headed man let Ali down gently onto the ground and felt his forehead. Better get help. This kid's a mess. Help, Samir thought to himself. You don't get help from someone you're about to kill, do you? Better get you checked out too, Bullhead told Samir. Crazy kids, why are you two running away like that? If you'd slipped on the slopes, you'd have been killed. What? Samir couldn't believe his ears. Did you know you were running round Leopard Territory? If you blundered too near her cubs, he pointed to the limp body in the jeep, she could have attacked you. Luckily, we got to her first. And then Samir's anger came back. This was not his fault. There was no excuse to kill such a beautiful animal. Then a lady carrying a big first aid kit came towards them. She knelt next to Ali and touched his face gently. One eye was swollen and red. His name? She asked without looking up. Ali, Samir told her. Wake up, Ali. She tapped him firmly on the shoulder. Wake up. Ali groaned and coughed and squinted around in confusion. She probed his bruises with gentle fingers and then said, You'll be fine. Nothing a good night's sleep won't cure. Samir crouched beside his brother and put his arm around him. The lady turned to Samir and touched his forehead. Nasty gas, she said. It may need a stitch or two. Are your parents around? They'll have to sign a consent form. Yes, I want to talk to your parents too, the bearded poacher added. Didn't they see the signs? Signs? They're all along the track, son. Warning, leopards sighted in this area. But we came up the other side, Samir told him. We didn't see anything. You climbed the cliffs, the bearded man said with a hint of respect. That's tough going. Why did you shoot the leopard, Ali asked in a tiny voice. It's so beautiful. She's not dead, the bearded man said. We tranquilised her. Ali and Samir looked up in surprise. The leopardess was injured. We had to help her. Also, we want to tag her so we can keep track of her in the wild. So you're not poachers? Samir asked. Is that what you thought? That you'd seen poachers kill a leopard? Samir nodded solemnly. Baldhead laughed. <laughs> no wonder you were running away. I guess I'd have done the same in your shoes. But why did you chase us then? Samir asked. We weren't sure how many leopards were around. Although it was most likely that a mother and her cubs would be alone, we couldn't be sure. We wanted to warn you to be careful. Ali and Samir stared at each other. There was no killing. They hadn't been chased by poachers. The scrapes, the scratches... The snake, the bees, the fear had all been for nothing. Ali's lip began to quiver. The relief was almost too much. Samir hugged him roughly. They were okay. They were safe. He hadn't failed his brother after all. So, you like leopards, do you? The bearded man said, coming over, carrying a sack. The boys nodded. What about cubs? He opened the bag and three squirming leopard cubs mewled up at them. <gasps> Ali gasped in delight. Do you want to hold one? <gasps> Can we? Samir asked in wonder. Won't their mother get upset? You're right, she will, the bearded man said. We were hoping to help the leopardess on the mountain and not have to touch her cups at all, he said. But she was hurt much more than we first thought. Her injuries may take days to heal and the cubs would have died without her. And now that we've handled them, their mother won't take them back. So we have to look after them from now on. The man placed one tiny cub in Ali's lap for it nuzzled his leg. The blotchy yellow white fur was soft and Ali stroked it gently. 
It's about ten days old. See, its eyes are just open. He placed another one in Samir's arms. It wriggled and sucked on his shirt. They're thirsty. Want to feed them? How? Ali asked. With this special leopard milk formula, Jack said, coming over with bottles of milk. He rubbed the teat in Ali's cub's mouth and it latched onto it hungrily. Hold the bottle up. Keep the milk flowing, he advised. He gave another bottle to Samir and the two boys watched in wonderment as the baby leopards fed. They must have been really thirsty because they finished the milk in minutes. Finally, Jack said, well, boys, it's time for you to go back to your parents or they'll get worried. I'll drive you if you like. Ali and Samir reluctantly handed back the tiny animals. Jack saw how gentle they were. He smiled and said, Once you boys have got cleaned up, how would you like to come back later today and feed them again for us? You could come again tomorrow too, and for as long as we're here. It'd be a big help for us to know if they were in such good hands. Well, Ali and Samir looked at each other in amazement. They'd been scratched and torn, slithered and crawled over, been bitten and lost. They were bleeding, bruised and swollen. Did they now want to nurse leopard cubs? Of course they did. The end.